Today, we're going to go over some of the changes in Windows 10 from Windows 7 and why Windows 10 is probably a better version of Windows. Stay tuned. Saying that one thing is better than another is honestly kind of hard to quantify sometimes because ultimately it comes down to my opinion. And you know, my opinion is worth what it's worth, but you know, you may disagree with me. However, currently I like Windows 10. I actually do like it better than Windows 7. That hasn't always been the case. When it was first released, I couldn't stand Windows 10. In fact, I installed Windows 7 on new computers long after Windows 10 was released. However, at this point, Windows 10 is the only supported version of Windows that we have. Well, there is Windows 8.1, but I don't even think that's worth talking about. I think we can all agree that Windows 8.1 just stinks. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the features in Windows 10 that I think distinguish it from Windows 7. And this will be a great video for people who are new to Windows 10 because I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you some of the differences between Windows 7 and Windows 10 and why I think the Windows 10 counterparts are actually better. Before we get too far into this video, if you like this kind of content, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Also, don't forget to like this video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm so other people can find my content. So without further ado, let's get to the video. So this here is the Windows 10 desktop. As you can see, it looks an awful lot like Windows 7. It definitely looks more like Windows 7 than it does Windows 8, and that's a good thing. But there's some notable differences. So what I'm going to start with is the Start menu. If you come down here and click on Start, you can see the Start menu in Windows 10 is a lot different than it was in Windows 7. The Windows 7 Start menu had your recent applications as well as pinned applications, and then on the right-hand side, it has all of your different folders or system functions and things of that nature. Now on the Windows 10 start menu, all of those system functions that used to be on the right are actually right here. And if you put your mouse up to it, it will actually swing it out. You can get to your user accounts here. By default, it has documents, pictures, and settings. Now I typically don't like the way this is configured by default. So what I normally do is right click on it and go to personalize this list. So if you click there, you can actually select everything that you want to have on this list. So what I typically do is turn on File Explorer and I turn off Documents and Pictures. However, you can turn on any one of these right here if you'd like. And then when we close this and go back to the Start menu, as you can see, it's changed. Now it only has File Explorer on the list. And this is also how you turn the computer off by hitting power. You can either go to sleep, shut down, or restart. Now in the second column here, we have all of our installed programs. In order to access this in Windows 7, you would have had to push the All Programs button. But here you have all the programs that are currently installed on the computer, and you can scroll through them right here from the list. Now any of these programs that you want to have quicker access to, you can always move them over to your tiles. And your tiles, this is the equivalent to the pinned icons and the recent list from the Windows 7 start menu. This is just their reimagining of it. So what you want to do is if you want to add something to this menu, all you'd have to do is take the application you want to add, click on it, drag it over, and then drop it on the list, and you can get it on your start menu as a tile. Now if you want to, you can modify this. So if you wanted to make it smaller, so you can fit more applications. All you would do is right click, go to resize, and then you can click small. Different tiles actually support different sizes. Like for instance, you can go down to photos, right click and go to resize, and you can make that large if you wanted to. And the weather tile, you can also right click, you can go down to resize and you can click on medium and it'll make it the size of a regular tile. So you can always change the way that these tiles look to correspond with your own personal preferences. Now I typically leave my weather icon large and I keep my photos icon wide because that's just kind of the way I've gotten used to it. Now if there's ever a tile on here that you don't want, all you have to do is right click on it and you can click unpin from start and it'll go away. Now if you ever run out of space, you can always come over to the side of the start menu and you can drag this over and you can make it as big as you want up to that point. 
You can add tiles in this whole area right here if you wanted to. So all you'd have to do is grab the tile, drag it over, and you can drop it anywhere on the start menu that you want. And you can make the start menu as big or as small as you wanted it to. Now, typically, I like to keep mine really simple. So I usually cut mine down to that. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is that Windows 10 actually has a secondary start menu. And you can get to that by right clicking on your start button. If you right click, you get this menu right here. And this gives you mostly administration functions. You can get to your device manager, your PowerShell, your settings, your task manager, and things of that nature. Or you can even get to the run command from right here. There are ways to customize this list. So for instance, if you'd like to replace settings with control panel, you can. I'm not going to go into how to do that in this video because it's actually kind of difficult, as well as the fact that every time Windows updates itself to a new build, it resets all the stuff back to default. So I've actually stopped customizing it. It's just not worth it because the amount of work that you have to put into it. This secondary start menu is actually quite effective. I typically use it to get to device manager or the PowerShell. That's the most common uses that I use it for. So the next difference that we're going to take a look at here is the taskbar right here. The taskbar, as you can see, looks a lot like the Windows 7 taskbar, but there are some notable differences. As you can see right off the bat, you have a search box on here. Now this search box, if you click on it, you can search the computer as well as the internet for whatever you happen to be looking for. So if we wanted to, I could type internet speed and it'll do a search for internet speed. So it opens up Windows Edge in order to perform the search. Now the problem with this is, is that on this computer, Chrome is actually my default browser. So it would be nice if this search box would actually use my default browser, but we can't expect Microsoft to actually respect your choices when it comes to default browsers, especially when they have a competition to win with Windows Edge. But I digress. So the next thing that we notice is that we can pin icons on the taskbar just like we could in Windows 7. So when we open a program, that program can be seen to be running based on the color of the icon in the taskbar. We can also pin other applications if we wanted to as well. So if I was to click on, let's say the Raspberry Pi imager. So when this opens, I can actually right click, I can hit pin to taskbar, and then when I close this application, you can see it remains on the taskbar, so I could get to it quicker this way. However, if I ever wanna get rid of anything on the taskbar, all I have to do is right click and hit unpin from taskbar and it goes away. And once you go and close an application, you'll see that the little line underneath the application disappears, indicating that the program isn't running anymore. And also, if you don't like this search box, which I actually don't, you can right click on the search box, go up to search and hit hidden, and you can actually take the search box away. Another feature of the Windows 10 taskbar is your task view right here. If you click on this, it'll show all the running tasks on the computer. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open up a few tasks right here, and then when we click on it, we can see all of our tasks that are running right here. Honestly, this is a really cool feature in Windows 10, but I have to say this is kind of ripped off from Linux. Linux has been doing this for years, but you know, it's nice that they actually have this feature in Windows now. And you can actually go through and you can kill these tasks from within the task viewer as well. You can also create multiple desktops. So if you wanted to, you could have, you know, say File Explorer open on one desktop, and then you could come over here and have another application open on another desktop. And then to switch between them, you would just have to click between which desktop you wanted from the task viewer. That's also another feature that's stolen from Linux. If you come down to the other side right here, you still have your clock like you had in Windows 7, as well as your other icons of things running, like your speakers and your network, and your hidden icons that you have for whatever other programs that you happen to have running. And one of the things that were added is this icon at the very end. This is your notifications. I typically turn my notifications off. And to do that, you would click on it and you would come up to the top and click on manage notifications. And then from here, you can actually uncheck all these boxes here and then turn it off right here. If you were to turn this on, you would have notifications that swipe out from the side right here and they actually honestly get kind of annoying. So the next notable change that we're going to discuss is the Windows 10 settings versus 
the old control panel. If you come down into your start menu, you can click on this little cog right here to get into settings. Now settings, this is the Windows 10 answer to the control panel that we've all grown to love over the years. The control panel has been around since I believe Windows 95, and it may even be earlier than that. I don't remember if Windows 3.1 had the control panel, but it might have. However, Microsoft tried to make the control panel more user friendly, and to be honest with you, I think they failed. And I don't know if it's that Windows settings isn't user friendly, or if it's that I'm just so used to the control panel that I just don't like the way that it's organized. Either way, I don't like it. However, from here, you can get to different settings based on categories. So if we were to click on system, we could get different categories from within system. We can go to power and sleep, we can go to storage, we could even scroll all the way down and go to about, and this would give you your different version of Windows that you happen to be running at the time. Now, if you still like control panel and you wanna use your control panel within Windows 10, all you have to do is search for it. So if we come down and click on the start button and start typing control panel, Panel, we'll get it in the search box right here. So we go ahead and click on it, and here's our old-fashioned control panel. However, from what I understand, Microsoft's actually going to start removing this from Windows 10 in future builds, and I think it's coming really quick. So unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to be able to get this back in the future. Hopefully, someone will figure out a way to put control panel back when Microsoft removes it. But in the meantime, we still have access to the majority of what control panel used to be able to do. My favorite feature and control panel, especially the ones that I use the most often, is uninstalling programs and hardware. If you click on hardware and things like devices and printers, I think this is organized a lot better than it is in the new settings. If you were to go to settings here, click on home, and then click on devices, this is how Windows 10 organizes your devices. And to me, this just isn't as in intuitive as it was back in the Windows 10 version. So it's going to take me a while to get rid of it. However, if Microsoft ends up removing this from Windows 10, then I'm really not going to have much of a choice. I'm going to have to figure it out. So if we go back into control panels, another feature of control panel that I use a lot is the uninstall a program. So if we click on that, it has our programs listed really easy. And this is just the way that I'm used to using it. From the Windows settings, if we click on Home and we go into Apps, this is actually how Windows 10 does it, is if you go down, you can scroll through and you can see your apps that are installed right here. And you know, I'm sure it works great, I just don't like it. I like using the old style program and features, but that's just my opinion. The nice thing about this is, is that as of right now, at least we still have the control panel in Windows 10. So even though settings, I don't believe is as good as the control panel, at least we have the control panel to fall back on. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about with Windows 10 is Windows 10's Windows Update. So if we click on Update and Security, here's the Windows Update. Essentially, this is really similar to the way it worked in Windows 7. However, in Windows 10, you don't have anywhere near as much control over Windows Update as you used to. Now, I know it used to be really popular in Windows 7 to actually disable Windows Update, which honestly, I never recommend doing. However, people really did do it. And unfortunately, it deprived their computer of important security updates that they actually needed. However, with Windows 10, it really doesn't give you a lot of control about how you can and can't run Windows Update. It pretty much runs Windows Update all the time and you don't have a say in whether or not it's gonna run or not. Windows 7, you could actually say it could only run at certain hours or it could only run on certain days. Windows 10, you don't have that control anymore. You can manually start Windows updates simply by pushing the check for updates button. However, if you do wanna disable Windows Update, there's a few things that you can do. If you have Windows 10 Pro, you can pause updates for seven days, like it says right here. However, this feature isn't available in Windows 10 Home. What you need to do is click on Home, and then go down to Network and Internet right here, and then go down to your Ethernet. Now, it's either gonna say Ethernet or wireless if you have a wireless connection. So if I click on Ethernet, it's gonna give me a list of the Ethernet adapters on my computer, and this is the only one that's here. So if I click on that, I can scroll down, and right here where it says metered connection, if I turn metered connection on, 
it will in turn disable Windows Update because one of the problems with Windows 10 running Update all the time is it ends up sucking up a lot of people's metered connections. So Microsoft gave us this ability to disable Windows Update and other apps that access the internet all the time. However, the downside to this is you're not going to get security updates as they're released. So I don't recommend doing this, but the option is available to do it if you wanted to. Okay, so the next feature I want to talk about with Windows 10 is the Task Manager. Now, to get to the Task Manager, all you have to do is right-click on the taskbar down here, and you can select Task Manager from the list. Now, when it opens up, you can see it's changed quite a bit from Windows 7. The Windows 10 Task Manager, on the first tab, it has your apps running right here. And then it has all the different breakdowns, like how much CPU usage, memory usage, and disk usage these apps happen to be using. You can also click over on the performance tab right here, and you can actually see these breakdowns from the hardware itself. So you can see CPU usage, memory, disk usage, ethernet, and GPU usage. GPU usage is actually something new in Windows 10 that you didn't have access to in Windows 7. So if we were to go back to the processes tab, if you want to end a process in Windows 10, all you would do is click on the process itself and then come down here and push the end task button. This is really similar to the way that it worked in Windows 10. So if we click that, the task goes away. You can also come through here, you can see app history. So this will show different metrics for how much time different applications have ran on the computer. If you scroll down on this list, if you ever have a situation where you wanna know how much CPU time a certain program has had, you can get to it from right here. Also, you can go to the next tab, to the startup tab, and this shows all of your different programs that start up with the computer itself. So if you ever wanna disable something, you would just click on the application you wanna disable and then push the disable button and it would turn that application off. In fact, now that I look at it, there's a lot of stuff on here that I really don't need enabled. I'm gonna have to go through here later and disable some of this stuff. So if we keep scrolling through the tabs here, we can go to the user tab. This shows the different users that are logged on and what resources that they're actually using on those different user accounts. So right here, I have my cyber CPU account, which is just a temporary account that I set up to make videos on, as well as my own personal account. So if we were to scroll down here, we can click on details. And this will just give you more details for each process that you have running. And then if we go to the very end, we have services, and this will give you a list of all the services that are currently running on the system. So I personally think that the new task manager is a lot more powerful than the task manager from Windows 10. There's lots of different customizations you can do to it also. Like for instance, on the CPU tab, Right here, you can show the overall CPU utilization. Well, you can also right click on this. You can hit change the graph and you can go to logical processors as well. So you can actually break this down to each individual logical processor that you have on the system. This is a six core processor running hyperthreading. So as you can see, there's 12 logical processors. So it'll give me a breakdown of each logical processor and what things that it's doing. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna look at here is we're gonna take a look at File Explorer. The File Explorer has changed a little bit in Windows 10. It actually hasn't changed that much. Considering the changes to the rest of the operating system, the File Explorer is pretty close to the same as it was in Windows 7. However, it does open up to your quick access originally. Now, I wish there was a way you could actually make File Explorer open to this PC instead of quick access because I typically spend the majority of my time clicking this PC whenever I open File Explorer, and it's one less click that I'd like to do. However, if anybody knows how to do that, please leave a message in the comments and let me know because I haven't been able to figure out a way to do it. But essentially what you're opened up to is you're opened up to your quick access folder. So this will give you your frequent folders that you use, and this will also give you your recent files that you've opened up. And you can also get to these through this list on the side right here too. Now if you click on this PC, this is essentially my computer from Windows 7. It'll give you access to not only your personal folders, but also your devices and drives that you have connected to the computer, like your CD-ROM, your hard drive, as well as network locations and things of that nature. Now, if you notice that Windows 7 used to have the file edit menus at the top, well, Windows 10 has actually moved to a more ribbon interface, kind of like the new versions of Office have. Many of the controls that you would get to before are actually set up in tiles now. So if you wanted to map a network drive or things of that nature, you would do it through clicking on these tiles and being able to select what you wanted to do. If you wanted to change the way that you're viewing your list, you can change it right here. And that there is my my overview of the differences 
between Windows 7 and Windows 10. Now, I think the way a lot of these features were implemented were actually done better in Windows 10. It took me a while to get used to them, but now that I'm used to them, I actually like the way they're done now. However, if we look back in time and we look at the way that different operating systems meant to us, I remember when I hated Windows 7 and still liked Windows XP. So sometimes it takes us a while to allow these operating systems or these different versions of Windows to grow on us before we start to like them. Hopefully this was helpful to you and this will help you get more used to Windows 10. While I have you here, I just wanted to let you know that I also have a website at cybercputech.com. This website has all the show notes to the videos on this page, and soon I'll actually be selling the t-shirts that I wear in these videos. In the meantime, there's a link to these shirts available in the description below. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I have a Twitter at CyberCPU as well as Instagram at CyberCPU as well. Now, if you like this video, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. Hey, and while you're here, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.